Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the training, learning, and development community, TLD cast, community discussion. Good morning, Kara. Hey, we got a couple Karas in this morning. This is awesome. Hey, Joe, good morning to you. Susan, thanks for coming in this morning. Um, an early morning edition. I'm glad that you guys are in. Uh, again, we're talking community discussion. If any of you guys want to jump in to the uh, into the on-screen experience, let me know, and I would be happy to invite you in. Um, we're going to be talking about go-to resources for L&D, which, just like so many of these community discussions that I seem to come up with, every time I start researching about it, um, it ends up becoming just like a huge sort of project. Like, I, you know, as soon as I started building up the content for this one, I'm like, oh, my gosh, we could totally just talk about conferences for one episode or just totally talk about websites that we go to for one episode. So um, I don't know how long this one is going to take. Oh, and look at that. We got Tati in. Joe is in. Good morning, Sonia. Hey, guys. Happy Valentine's Day to you, Rick. Um, I've got a three-day weekend. I don't know um, what you guys have going on, but I am so looking forward to taking an extra day off from work. Uh, so welcome again. Um, so before I get started, couple quick mentions. The certificate and certifications playlist is going really, really well. I, you know, I don't know why, but it's been one of my favorites so far, just because of kind of the discourse and some of the conversations I've I've gotten involved in. And the one thing that really just sort of stands out to me is that people really, you know, in this space really, really just love trying to help each other. And I'm just getting that through, um, you know, the emails that I've been receiving, people asking questions offline. Um, so that's going really well. And I have, so next week, Deidre, welcome. Um, somebody that hasn't been on TLD cast before is going to be um, our guest, the next one in the in the, in the certif certification playlist. And then after that, um, Alex Salas is going to be coming in. He's going to be talking about the switch from what is it? CPTD to CPLP for the ATD certification. So um, he's going to be on. I have at least one more guest that we're trying to get on the schedule. Um, TBD. And then also I'm starting development for the next playlist for March, which I'm happy to announce is going to be on storytelling. And um, I believe I already have like four speakers for that one. So March is going to be storytelling month. And I am very excited about that. We are going to have at least one guest that's going to be talking improv. So I'm especially excited about that. And so, um, yeah, keep an eye out. Um, Hey, Betty, thanks for coming in. AG, uh, welcome. Okay, so I want to get something out of the way first before we get started on this. When I was pulling together some of these resources, these are all mine. These are just things that I know off the top of my head of just kind of being around for a long time. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to get through everything that I put together, um, especially if we start having conversations about um, specific uh, instances or specific resources, which is fine. I don't, you know, um, I actually, uh, am having this early broadcast because my son is going, you know, I want to walk him to kindergarten and just kind of check out the pre Valentine celebration that's happening at school. So that's why I wanted to do an early one this morning. And I know last night they were up late, like just making Valentine's cards. So I kind of just, uh, you know, love that type of thing. So um, <clears throat> we're just going to get into it. But so the resources that I have are kind of through the lens of, of this. TLDC, the training, learning, and development community, you know, in the way that I wanted to put it together and the way in my heart is the way that I always looked at this community is that everybody that participates is the resource. Like there are all these other resources out there, but the most important resource that we could possibly have is each other. And even when we were building events and all that stuff, I was really focused on like, who are these amazing people that are a part of this industry? And I naturally gravitate towards the people in this space that are positive and try to really lift one another up. And, and I hope that that shows in um, kind of the, the way that, uh, that, you know, our, our, our core sort of group is sort of you know, put together is it really is focused on kind of just being in service to others. It's always been my thing. And so I just want to get that out of the way. Best resource of all time is each other. You know, I know that Kara is probably the best resource for everybody, but you know, it's all, 
<laughs> but you know, um, there is, it's, it's, it, that's the way that I look at it is that it's, it's individuals that are, and there you go, Joe, I, you know, I love being part of this industry primarily because of the other people in this industry, they're the best. And it's, that's true because, you know, um, I can't say that I'm an L and D practitioner per se. I am more, uh, I'm just passionate about the people in L and D and that happened to me, um, a really, really long time ago. And so that's why I really frown upon when people are sort of like determined to like, I don't know, talk about like, or lessen the value of the instructional designer because um, um, people that are trainers, corporate trainers, just in, you know, in, in higher ed, just teachers, just they're most valuable people in the world as far as, as I'm concerned. So um, that's why I'm here. And with that, let's see if I can, I did this, um, I made sort of a slide deck with a list of a bunch of stuff and um and, and let's see, I'm going to go ahead and share that right now. Uh, and I'm going to share this out to everybody. In fact, let me grab the link to it real quick. And I will um, post that in the chat uh, if you guys want to follow along. But otherwise, I'm just going to bring it on screen. Let me see. I'm going to just read a couple comments here. Laura says, hi, Karen, everyone. Happy Friday, Valentine and Galentine's Day. Yes. And Joe says, Karen means dear and expensive in Italian. She's very dear to me and not at all expensive with her generosity in sharing her expertise. <laughs> ah, that must feel good to hear, um, Kara. Yeah, hey, Joe G, you are a gem. You are too kind. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, here we go. Let's share this thing. If I can, I'm going to pull up. Wait, let's see. Oop. Wait, let me. I'm going to grab this over here and we're going to share a screen right there. Oops, application window. There we go. Share. Okay. Can you guys see that? Let me know. Hopefully it's uh it's working for you. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, so today we are just gonna be talking about conferences, communities, and websites. Once I started pulling up like all the resources that were sort of at the top of my head, I'm like, oh, I've got so many, including podcasts and webcasts and blogs and, you know, whatever else is out there, workshops. I just decided, you know, let's just focus on conferences, communities and websites. Maybe we'll get through conferences today. I don't know, but um, we'll give it a go. Um, the major point that I just mentioned earlier, you're the most important resource. You guys are the reason that TLDC exists. And, you know, as I was kind of going through the content for this, it, that just kept on sort of, you know, showing up in my head over and over and over again. Investing in one another is investing in the future of, of this profession, of what we do. Um, and I really, really believe that. Um, you know, I'm here as a passion project. I hope that you guys get value out of what TLDC does because um, that's what we're focused on. It's just helping one another. Um, so let's get into the conferences. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Joe, I, I do have LT20 um, learning technologies in this list. It's going to be the, the second group. So here we go. So I'm going to start with um, e-learning guild conferences, and I'm sure that lots of, oh, uh, sorry, AG is Alice Godinas. Good morning. Um, I was wondering who that was. Um, <clears throat> so e-learning guild events, as you guys know, used, I used to be, I was on the starting, um, the founding team for the e-learning guilds. So of course, they're going to be some of my, um, you know, some of the ones that I'm really familiar with just because I was there for so long. DevLearn, we just talked about call for proposals yesterday with Kara. Um, Karen, John, and who else was in there? Thomas Seelock and who was it? Jonathan, Jonathan Hill. Yeah, that was really, really cool. Um, DevLearn is an amazing event. It's just, uh, it, it has just grown huge. I mean, I remember when it was, you know, a couple hundred people and now it's like over 4,000. So, um, and that happens in Las Vegas every year. If you are somebody that is looking to do a Las Vegas event in, um, in this space, that pretty much is it. Um, it's giant and they really do focus on trying to be more innovative, more leading edge. Just, um, I mean, I can give you the whole history of it. It used to be called like the annual gathering and it was always trying, I'm sure Joe Ganshi probably remembers that it was always trying to be a little bit more innovative and, um, 
and sort of forward thinking in this space. Um, now I think it's established itself as kind of being like one of the premier events in globally. And then the eLearning Guild also has the Learning Solutions Conference, which is coming up really, really soon. Lots of people are going to that one. Um, that used to be my favorite event of the eLearning Guilds, um, just because it was, uh, it just felt a little more um, intimate. <clears throat> It used to be at the Hilton in, in Orlando. Now it's at the Rosen Center. Um, you never know. I might hit another one of those up. I actually really used to love going to Orlando every year and um, and doing that conference. Um, let's see. I'm going to read a few um, a, f a few comments out here. Just as annual gathering became Learning Solutions Conference. No, it did. It, well, it, it became Learning Solutions because it was in Orlando. Annual gathering actually used to be like, we did annual gathering in San Jose. I think we did it in Boston one time and then moved it to Orlando and then it became learning solutions. Um, annual gathering was going to be the big one that the guild did, um, which it was super fun. But since DevLearn became the big thing, it sort of ended up switching to that. Um, uh, yeah. Susan says learning solutions is a great confer conference for those newer to the industry. Yeah. And you know, and this is the one thing I also want to say about events. My favorite thing about events and how, you know, when Brent and I first started everything, our favorite thing about events was just being around people, meeting people, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've taken a handful of sessions through the years. I don't really remember much of those sessions, many of those sessions. Mostly I remember my relationship experiences and that's, you know, um, and I'll talk about this later, but with TLDC and if potentially we have an event this year, that's what the focus really is, is kind of just um, an event that builds relationships. Um, um, okay, so, and Reality360 is co-located um, with the Learning Solutions Conference this year. Um, so that event, you know, if you're into AR, VR, anything like that, um, they're going to be doing some of those act activities over um, in Orlando. So um, I don't know. And you guys, who all is going over to, uh, to Learning Solutions in a few weeks? Because um, I think that one's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing how that Reality360 event goes. I'm a big fan of the VR. Oh, there you go. Betty's going to be there. And um, yeah, Karen North. Not me, I'll be in PhD hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear you. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. And like Joe Cook mentioned earlier, Learning Technologies UK just happened. And um, I kind of have um, Learning Technologies UK just right before, before the Guild one because the Guild is sort of, um, was purchased by um, Closer Still Media recently or last year, I think it was. And, um, and they're the same company that runs the learning technologies events. So um, they're actually part of the same group that took place this last week. Um, I am not, I'm sort of like taking myself off of social media somewhat. So I haven't been paying attention to what's been going on at that particular event. Always looks like it's pretty much like the event to attend in the UK. Um, and Joe, if you have any, hey, Joe, do you even want to come on and just do a, can you, can you give a quick rundown of how uh, learning technologies <laughs> went? No. Okay. No makeup today. Okay. I got you. Um, and J-Rock, is L&D the new jet set? It sort of feels like it sometimes. Um, and Joe did the exhibition. It was great. One of my favorite things that Joe does is when she does the expo and does, and reports from the expo. Um you know, she should probably be a news broadcaster and uh, instead of being an L&D just because she's so darn good at it. Yeah, her walking microphone sessions are amazing. <laughs> no makeup for, for Joe Gancy today. All right. So moving on to the next one. And hopefully for some of you folks that don't go to events or um, are interested in um, choosing conferences this year, this is going to be helpful. But um, coming up in in May, you oh, actually, let's start with Technology first, because that one just wrapped up last week. Um, technology that just took place in San Jose. I heard a lot of wonderful things about it. Joe Ganchi, I don't know if you went. Oh, yeah. Betty said Technology was great. A lot of really different things happening there that whole i don't know what is it the sort of the silent headphone um deal very innovative um i know matt pierce was part of the program team and um who else um melissa milloway so i think it was probably a little bit more edgy than how it's been in the past quite frankly i think technology had sort of like become um 
pretty boring, you know, to be blunt. Um, but it looks like this year they picked it up and it did really, really well. Um, let's see. Carol was saying Tim Slade and Simon Blair was part of the program team too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, Laura said, I'm just soaking it up, trying to find my area of expertise, specialty, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here this morning. So technology just happened. And then ATD ice, the big one, I'm not even sure who the keynotes are. They're usually giant. This is the biggest event in North America for L and D professionals. Um, Happening in Denver, May 17th through the 20th. Um, oh, Richard Branson is going to be there. He's keynoting ATD Ice. Thank you, Kara. Um, I have never been to ATD Ice. I just know that it's giant, and I'm personally not not a huge fan of the of the big events. Even though you know, I was uh, uh, well. I think part of that is because um, I worked DevLearn for so many years, but. Um, so I have not ever attended one of those. I'm considering going this year just to check it out, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> and J-Rock says, is ATD ice like the L&D Comic-Con? Kara Spray says, accurate, J-Rock. Yeah, um, I would say so. <laughs> Too bad there is um, um, cosplay. Uh, no cosplay at, uh, at, at ATD ice. Uh, okay, so and here's some other ones, and, and I was actually glad that Joe Ganchi was going to be is in this morning because um, because Tech Learn and and training from from Training Magazine those are two that happen that I actually don't hear a lot about, and um, and I know Joe, you're pretty much like a regular at those. Yeah, I'm glad every time you show up, Joe. But um, you know, I have never been to those. I know that they are just happening, like, you know, and and Ray Jimenez, I think, is still um, somebody that works very closely with training. And uh, uh, but so I don't really have any experience with them, but they've been solid. They've been around for as long as I can remember. So they've been around for at least like 15 years or so. Um, um, and, and, and I know they look like, you know, they're generally like really solid events. Yeah. Joe says, I love trading conferences. They're smaller, but well done. Yeah. You know, everything that I hear about them, that, that there's, a, there's always lots of love at the, at the trading magazine events. And um, that's always been super important to me. So, um, so as you can see, there's, there's one coming up, you know, in February 21 to the 26th in Orlando. And then there's one in October tech learn, <clears throat> October 11th through the 16th in Austin, Texas. Um, at some point, maybe I'll, um, I'll hit one of those up. I'd, I'd love to check it out. Nowadays, I, I might even qualify for a, for a, for a media pass. You never know, right? There's gotta be some benefits to this, to this crazy job of the, of being the TLC, TLDC guy. Um, and then training industry, Training Industry Conference and Expo Rally, North Carolina, June 16th through 18th. I am really intrigued by this one. I have never been. Um, I would love to hear from anybody that's been to um, the training industry events. Um, it's, their website is is also kind of a resource. I, I sometimes go there. I know that they also have some certifications that they offer. I mean, I've been kind of going through that a little bit. Um, if oh okay so Alex were you are you saying that you've only been to one conference very expensive for smaller companies which um which conference is this for training industry training industry in particular because I'd love to um to hear more about that one um I just uh, and you know and that's something that came up when I was uh, when I was putting together these resources is you know the TLDC world and even the world you know our L and D Twitter world and just like even when I was at the e-learning guild, we always knew that it's just such a small, tiny speck in the grand, you know, the 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 larger picture of uh, of L and D out there. And so there, I mean, this is a lot of events in our space, and um, there are people that completely exist, like you know outside of our normal circles that um, I am so curious about because I want to hear everybody's perspective on things. Um, yeah. Okay. So no training industry folks. Let's see. I'm kind of looking through the chat here. Oh, Susan is mentioning a couple of other ones that ATD does that's smaller scale and great for people new to the industry. Core four. Yes, I've heard of core four. They typically offer two times per year. Don't know if it'll change now with the new capability model. Right. Um, Toddy says, I already mentioned this to, um, to me, but she's working to organize an affinity group in New England. Oh, I like how you, that's called an affinity group. 
Um, focused on ID sharing, what we do and no um, suggestions welcome. Yeah, so that is a conversation Tati and I are having about um, just kind of getting people together in, um, in, in sort of, I guess, a local chapter type of thing. If you guys are interested, um, Tati and I are gonna be going forward and just talking more about that um, and seeing what, what we can organize. Back to the conferences, Learning 2020, um, Mr. Maisie, uh, yeah, I think, Joe, you're somebody that has, I'm sure, been to uh, to Maisie's event. Those are very different events. Um, Maisie, as you guys, as some of you may know, is uh, he's he's a he's a Broadway producer. And um, from what I've heard, his events tend to be more like more like shows um and are uh are more sort of like entertainment focused in in a lot of ways um oh and joe ganchi says he's never been to a mazy conference oh my gosh um i'm surprised yeah and 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 joe cook mentions that um that mazy is owned by closer still uh, media the same um, company that now owns um, the e-learning guild and also owns um the learning technologies event so um so things are changing in the conference space, uh, and uh, and and I think that a lot of these events, although you know right now their cores are sort of still intact, they're going to start to um, to to kind of become a lot more similar to one another. Um, but Maisie's event is is kind of more designed for you know really executives, and it's it's has a um, a feel of exclusivity about it. Um, uh, it, it's going to be changing, though, I, I believe. Uh, they'll try to keep the kind of the same feel in some ways, but uh, I think it'll open up a little bit more. Um, oh, and Susan says her, one of her first L&D conferences was learning. It was very produced. Mm -hmm. um, Tamara says really likes his stuff. Um, you know, um, yeah, I, Elliot Maisie is... Uh, uh, um, is He's been in the industry forever. I've heard that he can, like... You know, he's just one of those people that is a fantastic facilitator. Um, all right. So, oh, Kara Spray. My mother went to them. Um, I'm a second gen ID, and she said she never really got much out of them because they were more about showmanship and big speakers. I'm encouraged to hear them changing. Ah, oh, that's great. That's good to hear. That's good to hear, Kara. And then, of course, here's a, one of the favorites, um, sort of within within the community, learning Dev Camp in Salt Lake City, um, <clears throat> and I love that this 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 one is has been around as long as as it has. Uh, let's see. When I had initially sort of listed some of this stuff in our Slack group, um, I know that uh, Nick Floro had posted Learning Dev Camp. Um, this one, you know, it's just great. I haven't been there myself. I've just um, you know, I've just known about it for years. I've, I've, I've talked to Jason Bickle in the past and, um, and, and, and I think it's great when these, these smaller events, um, uh, have the reputation that they do. Um, and, and I definitely, I, I could just safely recommend this one to anybody that's interesting and interested in kind of like a smaller event. I don't know. Uh, the one thing is, you have do you have to stay in the dorms or you can stay in a hotel room or something? I guess that, that was sort of one of the one things that I thought was um that I wasn't um that into. But oh there you go. Kara says you can stay in the hotel. Um oh Mohammed, yeah, I did. If you scroll up uh, as far as this deck, you can scroll up and I have a link to it and you could absolutely grab this deck <laughs> if you'd like. J Rock, I, I think it, he says I think it would be cool if it actually was a camp. Well, that's sort of what I'm thinking TLDC 20 is gonna be about. Um we're just going to do a camp. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then um, Nick Flora had submitted this one to the Canadian e-learning conference, which, um, you know, our, um, our family up North, uh, I, I would, this one gets, I mean, I hear tons of kudos about this one. Um, very passionate group uh, produces this, this e-learning conference. Um, Betty's going to be at the Canadian e-learning one. Uh, you know, we should all go. Oh yeah. Kara's going, going to the Canadian e-learning this year. I would love to hear a bunch about it. Maybe you guys can just come on and do a, uh, do a report on this one happening in June. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So Joe says I taught at the Canadian e-learning conference last year. It was good, but my wife got kidney stones while we were there and I blame Canada, Joe. <laughs> Blaming Canada, your wife's kidney stones. That is a great, well, it's not a great story. It's tragic. 
Um, but uh, anyway, <laughs> it's Canada. Um, I would love to hear reports on this one. Um, I just heard so much about it. TLDC 20 still trying to figure that one out. So one of the things I wanted to say about TLDC 20 is that, as you can see, there are a lot of events that happen throughout the year. And, um, you know, we did 16, 18, and 19. We did three years, you know, and then, of course, TLDC changed. Um, Brent and I are no longer um, producing TLDC together. He's doing um, his thing. And, um, you know, I have my ideas about how I would want to produce an event. Um and I, I I want to see those ideas happen. I think it'd be really amazing. I know that I can put together really an, a, a very different event. The way that um, that events conferences have been kind of constructed have, has been the same for the last like forever since the eighties. You know when you when you think about it, and you know I everything that I did about, you know, the TLDC events, we tried to keep some traditional formatting to it, but, you know, it's like, this isn't, I'm, you know, I want to focus on the people that show up. I want to celebrate the fact that these people are coming together. And, um, but, you know, had to, couldn't just get too crazy about it. The first TLDC 16 one, I kind of went a little too crazy and spent way too much money and had it at kind of a lavish location. That was super fun. Um, you know, we toned it down a little bit by bringing it to galvanize and, and and not spending as much. But, you know, next one, I'm still working on it. We'll see what happens. I want to make sure that it's going to be something that is worth going to, um, you know, and, and there's a lot of events to compete with. It has to be something that's going to bring something different because um, TLDC is different as far as I'm concerned. And that's just me. And so we'll see what happens. Um, all right. So I am not going to get into, uh, I can't read any of the comments. Oh, Louise, could you please repost the link to the PPT again at the end? So difficult to scroll up in, in, in PowerPoint. I'll, in fact, I will, I think I just still have it in my clipboards. So let me see. Oh, I missed the conference. Betty, go ahead and um, post about it in here and let me know. Oh, learn a Palooza in Seattle. Yes. I don't know enough about that one. So, um, oh, Crowdcast won't let me post this because um, I already posted it. So I can't do that. All right. Um, you know what I was going to say is that go back, if you can, go into TLD chat and um, and add it to the resources there. And I will um, I will add it to this slide deck. Lernapalooza. Let's see. It's Darren Nerland and somebody else. I think it was... Um, um, who was it that introduced me? I think it was Rose, Rose, Rosie Price. Um, that sounds like a great event. Yeah, there you go. You guys check out Learn a Palooza. Um, I've heard about that. Uh, Mohammed is asking where DevLearn is. DevLearn is in Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, that's a big one, Mohammed. If you want to kind of go to an event and get pretty much overwhelmed. Oh, where is DevLearn on the slides? <laughs> Uh, it is, if I think it's like the first or second slide, it's at the top. I kind of put a, the link that I put to the guild events was, um, was kind of to their, their main page. It listed all their events. It wasn't to the actual DevLearn one. And if you look up DevLearn, if you Google DevLearn, you're going to, um, you're going to end up finding DevLearn 19. Those guys, um, still got to get all their SEO stuff straightened out. All right. So... Going to move on to some communities. So you got TLDC. Thank you so much for being here and participating. And every time you guys post in TLD chat, you know, um, you're just helping each other, just answer questions, um, being a resource to one another. That's important. But I wanted to point out a few, um, a few different communities out there that I occasionally browse. And, and one of the, you know, this is, I don't know if you guys ever do Reddit and look at these subreddits, but there's always interesting stuff in there. Um, I just listed three. There's some other sort of ancillary ones that you can check out too. I would seriously bookmark these and just keep an eye on some of those conversations. Um, <laughs> interesting is one way of putting it. Yeah, no, but I, you know, it's, it's different. And you, you sort of have to, um, it is different, Kara. I don't know how to describe it. And I think that's one of the 
one of the things about this industry is that there are a lot of very, very different people that are involved in it. And I think it's so Reddit has a flavor that is kind of all of its own. And um, but I see a lot of newbies that come onto um, some of these these um, subreddits on there that um, post some really, really interesting perspectives. Um, and and I think that's one of the things that um, that that entice me the most about those particular communities. And Reddit overall is just you know it's 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 kind of the wild west in in, in some ways. So um so oh, Jonathan Rock, cue the wild wild west music. Yeah, Kara Spray says I was trawling those subreddits when I was going through my master's in instructional design. Yeah, so I'm glad that some of you guys have experienced those. Um, feel free to snag those links if you want to want to check them out. LinkedIn, there's too many groups. Um, I just listed these groups because I don't even I couldn't figure out everyone was called ex instructional design. These were some of the bigger ones that I found and that I follow on LinkedIn, but I never go there. I don't know if you guys do um, that. You know, if you guys are sort of the same way, you find a group and then um, you hit it up and you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to follow this group. And then. It just is not very appealing, especially some, you know, a few of them are just filled with kind of spammy posts and stuff. But LinkedIn does have groups. Um, uh, there are some, you know, I know that people do have quality experiences in some of those groups in LinkedIn. I just don't go, you know, I, I don't have enough time to to really sort through those. But check some of these LinkedIn ones out if, if you'd like. Um, I don't know if you guys have any particular recommend recommendations on any of these LinkedIn groups. Um, but um, feel free to post and um, uh, on TLD chat and I'll just add it there specifically. Let's see. Oh, here's the big one. Articulate e-learning heroes community. This one I've always admire, admired from afar. <clears throat> I am not an articulate user. I don't use that software at all. So um, I've never participated. Um, I've just watched them and they, are just an incredible group. Articulate has done a great job of building out that community. Um, you know, some of the regulars know, of course, that Jonathan Hill is uh, somebody that is very active on there. You know, kudos to these guys um, that, that they've built this out. And just that, you know, all the guys that um, at Articulate, like David Anderson and, you know, just that whole group, they're, they're, um, the, the, they've built such an interesting um, um, situation there. Um, yeah. Joe Ganchi says articulates group has no equivalent. It's great. Yeah. Rick says Tom Kuhlman is my hero. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how the, those guys, this, those personalities have really sort of like floated to the top and um, you know, and, and it, it's funny because I, I don't ever really hear um any criticism of Articulate, I hear criticism of the software, but it's almost like uh, their leadership has really sort of driven um, the success of the product, you know, it, and, and, and that, that's, that's just a, a really, really cool thing. Um, oh, Kara says she's, no, I'm doing my dissertation on the Articulate community. That's interesting. Um, all right. Next groups. So Kara submitted these Facebook groups. Kara, do you want to come on? Would you want to talk about this instructional design group and instructional designers and education group? I know um, um, Rosie Price also has a Facebook group on there, but I couldn't find it when I was um, when I was looking last night. And plus, I was helping make Valentine cards. But um, I'm not somebody that does Facebook anymore, so I really wasn't going to spend much time in there. But um, Kara says she had to leave them. They raised my blood pressure and I just couldn't deal with it. Oh, you had to leave the groups. Okay. Um, let's see. Betty is posting something about Rosie's group, learning professionals. There you go. Rosie's group. Um, yeah. So check these guys out. If you guys do Facebook, um, you know, there are more and even TLDC has one on there. I just haven't, you know, there, I, it just is there. It's not anything that I really, you know, people ask to join it all the time and occasionally I'll jump in and, you know, when my mom messages me on, you know, on uh, messenger or whatever it is, um, <laughs> I'll jump into my TLDC account and like um, add people. But uh, yeah, generally I'm not, I'm, I, 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 that Facebook group is, is kind of dead and I do try to push people over to TLD chat um, when, whenever I can. 
Um, okay, and 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 Joe has her own community. We'll we'll, we'll talk about that as soon, right at the end here when I wrap some of these other ones up. Um, yeah, there you go. Kim says if something is on FB only, I will never see it. Left that behind a couple years ago. Um, yes, J Rock, you're right. Idol, I D O L. I think that is Robin Sargent's um, Facebook group. That's right. She's on there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, learn chat. This is something that, um, that Nick Floro, um, posted. Uh, oh wait, I formatted this wrong. Oh no, no. Yeah, I did format this wrong. Sorry. These should be two different things. Learn chat is different than, than twist. So sorry about that. So this should be twist. This is, this is kind of, okay. So learn chat. I don't know if you guys, um, I'm sure that a lot of you have experienced it already if you're on Twitter, but um, Learn Chat has been around forever. And um, it always seems like the, well, not always. Generally, the conversation is really, really strong and compelling if um, you're somebody that likes to do um, Twitter chats. Um, check that out if you'd like. What happens on Thursdays, I think the one just happened last night. Um, uh, it, it's 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 worth doing if you're um, or at least uh, tracking if you're somebody that is into um, Twitter chats. Um, Twist, which I haven't looked at in a long time, is the eLearning Guild's blog that I think David Kelly primarily runs. Um, and I haven't looked at that one uh, at DK's uh, what what he does on there in a while. But um, but Nick posted it, and I'm I'm sure that those guys do stuff. I, I've always been kind of like. Eh, about um, the guild, like building out a community. Um, I'm, you know, it's very different from the way that I think of a community. So um, I should take a look to see how, um, how, how what, what twist looks like. Um, let's see. And then there's us. Welcome. Uh, we do this, you know, we only have as many broadcasts as I can find the time for. And, you know, and I really can only like per week can only format and get people together a couple times a week because it, you know, it really is like my weekends are, are taken up with, um, with, with, with doing, you know, TLD stuff for the most part, but I'm so glad that you guys are all here. Um, if it were up to me, every single person in here would have their own broadcast, you know, that you guys could just, because it is, it's, it, we're all resources for one another. And, you know, nowadays, you know, the reality is when you're looking for an answer for something, the first thing you do, like for me anyway, is I go to Google. If I can't, if I can't, you know, if Google doesn't give me what I need to know, I'm going to reach out to, you know, Joe Ganchi or Kara or somebody um, directly. And um, that's what TLDC's sort of the, the strength of it is, is that, you know, what I want is for you guys to be able to meet people, meet other people that might have answers to the solutions. I mean, might have yeah, answers to the questions that you guys have and, and kind of that's what this community is about. And I'm, uh, I don't know if, if, if there's anything else out there that is, is wants to be that direct about it, but I'm making, you know, even over the next, like, um, eight weeks or so you'll see some big changes that are going to sort of push that even, um, even more forward. Um, okay. So let me go back with, that was kind of the last community mentioned. I want to go ahead and go back to Joe's community because she had posted here, um, light bulb moment dot community. Um, I'll make a slide for this. Um, when we after we've wrapped up and she also has a, a Facebook group, group too. So you can go to light bulb moment. Keep that in mind. Joe is fantastic. Um, I have to be honest, Joe, I haven't, I haven't been um, to, um, to your community in either place, but um, if it's anything like you, it's gotta be absolutely um, lovely. Um, let's see. And I am going to read some stuff out. Um, Let's see. Toddy says she wants to give a shout out to her current project coworker, Kurt Zilbersher, who manages a, this F, uh, manages a Facebook group. So check that out there. Um, looks like it's called eLearning 2.0. Um, and then let's see. Oh, and I want to see. Let's see. Light bulb Joe. Yay, TLDC. Thank you. Um, um, oh, thanks, Kim. Are you. Kim says she preaches everything, appreciates everything that I do, Luge. And just so you guys know, that's my my family nickname is L O O J, even though my my name is Luis, but my 
my parents used to call me Luigi. And then it, for some reason it ended up being just Luge. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's go down to, let's see, we've 745. See, this is going by really, really fast. And pretty soon I've got to take off and walk my son to um, Valentine's Day kindergarten. So um, websites. I, I'm kind of um, this one. I just put all on one page because I kind of would like to hear from you guys. <laughs> How often do you guys actually even go to websites anymore to um, to do L and D stuff? I mean, maybe you do. Um, whenever I'm looking for stuff, I always end up at e learning industry. But that's pretty much because um, you know Mr. Pappas over there. That was his whole goal was to make sure that anytime you wanted to look up anything in L and D, you were going to end up at e learning industry, and he did it. I mean, pretty much, I always end up at. Um, I always end up at e-learning industry when I'm looking for stuff. Um, that is a good one. It's, you know, it. you'll find a lot of sponsored content. You'll find, um, you know, it might be hard to find certain things that you want to know, but there's also a ton of valuable stuff on there. And those guys have done amazing, an amazing job of really, um, uh, of, of, of getting a lot of, a lot of information into a website. Um, Learning Solutions Magazine. Um, of course, I'm partial to this one because um, um, I um, I used to work uh, at the Guild, and Bill Brandon is is my bro. Um, Bill Brandon's the, the the senior editor there. I just he is such a great man, and um, and the content there is always really really solid. Um, it's kind of more kind of old style, right? Where you know get ready to you know kind of sit down for a while on your iPad or on your laptop and it's going to, you know, you've got a few thousand words to have to read through. But um, if you're into that, you'll, you'll find interesting content there all the time. Um, Let's see. And Kim says, I get email blasts for many of these, but I don't often click through to be honest. I totally agree. Um, Let's see. Oh, and shout out to training journal. Yes, of course. Actually, I didn't. I didn't have Training Journal in this one. Sorry, Joe. Um, I should. I'll, I'll put it in there. Um, training Magazine. Don't really go there very much. It's out there. I, you know, uh, most of these websites really. Um, when you think about it, ultimately are kind of to you know to kind of funnel people over to, um, to conference experiences and um, and workshops and online events, things like that. I think that, you know. It, it's it it wouldn't it 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 would not be incorrect to say that that's really uh, the reason why a lot of these websites exist. Um, e learning learning. I don't have you guys ever been to e learning learning, which is kind of an aggregator. I'm not a fan. I'll just say it out loud right now. But I, I decided to put that in there because I wanted to say that I'm not a big fan. Um, e learning learning is something that uh, there's it's uh, it it kind of auto aggregates. Um, um, content and just puts it on a website and, you know, and, and gets a ton of, um, ton of website traffic because it does that. I'm just not a big fan, fan. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see here if you guys can, okay, there you go, Susan. Yeah, totally agree. It's, you know, um, e-learning learning is, is it's there, but you know, it, it's it, it just it doesn't work for me. Elearn Magazine, the ACM one, um, there is usually something interesting that comes up there every once in a while. And um, and, and I do check them out uh, on occasion. E-Learning Magazine, which, you know, Joe Ganshi, I mean, I don't want to call us old timers, but you probably, you know, know the 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 that e-learning group. Um those guys exist. <laughs> They're still around. I don't know if anyone goes there. They actually have events too, I think. And um, but uh, um, and as you imagine, as you can imagine, the reasons why I know about this stuff is because I, when I worked at the e learning guild, I used to watch you know these other uh, the, the these other media uh, groups and e learning magazine. They do occasionally have some content that might be worth looking at, but um, for the most part. Uh, it's, it's not very contemporary at all. And then of course, TD.org, which is, um, ATD's website. And, um, I always find that interesting on the branding side. I don't know how many people go to TD.org to look for content, but, um, you know, it's there. I, I, I really don't. And, um, 
Uh, but yeah, those are the websites. Um, so again, if you guys have anything to add, please. Oh, you know, like Kim has um, Will Tallheimer's site up here. I want to do go over blogs next time. So, and he has, um, and, and, and Will and, you know, Clark Quinn with Learnlets and, and even Kara with, um, with, with, with her blog. I, I want to talk about that in a separate, separate community discussion, because I think that's where a lot more of the compelling content like that, you know, I would regularly want to browse comes from. I want to talk about um, next time we'll, we'll talk about uh, blogs. I also want to talk about newsletters. I'm like, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of newsletters. I just, you know, I, I, I like to make our, um, the TLDC newsletter useful. Like sometimes my, my interesting links are probably <clears throat> just interesting to me and not interesting to everybody else, but I do love being able to like, kind of create value out of something and, you know, just not disturb people too much, but just make it so that um, maybe it's just worth a, you know, a quick read. Um, but there are so many other newsletters out there that um, basically change my, change the way that I think on a regular basis. And as you guys probably know, I work for O'Reilly media, O'Reilly media releases some of the best newsletters um, <clears throat> just full of information for people that are into different things like AI programming, um, web development, just different things. Oh, Joe Gant, she probably knows that, but um, their next economy newsletter is, um, is my favorite. I just love that thing. Um, but I want to talk about newsletters next time. I probably talked about it too much already. And um, <laughs> sorry, Alex, thanks. Flexing on them foos. Um, I, I, <laughs> that, that's too good. That totally got me there. Um, but yeah, so next time we'll be talking about that stuff. And that's it. That's all I got. And I can't believe I did this entire broadcast by myself. That's really weird. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the screen share. Dun, 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 and I'm back. So you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully you're having a three-day weekend like me. Happy Valentine's Day to any of you. I know that tonight I'm going on a double date with my buddy Mike Sloat, and we're going to go see some middle-aged punk rockers play some music um, with our wives. We're going with our wives to go see some middle-aged punk rockers play some music. And um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for coming in again. Don't forget, next week we have one certifications um, cast set up with Deidre Welcome, and then um, lots more coming up. And uh, yeah, we'll get you next time. Thank you, guys.